Welcome to Hashtag 52 Needs. And this week we are talking about kindness. And I am so delighted to have with me Dr. Eliza Howard, PhD, who is the owner and ideas woman of Flish Consulting. Eliza is an independent facilitator, speaker, academic researcher, and writer with over 20 years of experience in the higher education, media, and corporate sectors. She helps clients develop strategy, culture, and policy using facilitation methodology. Hello, Eliza. Hello, Angela. Again, after talking about <laughs> kindness in life, it's now time to talk about kindness at work. Indeed. Indeed. So, thank you for having me. Thank you. And I know that we both are very passionate about kindness at work. Very passionate. I think anyone who um, anyone who works with others should be passionate about kindness anyone who works for themselves and alone should be passionate about kindness to themselves um but also i think and especially if we've had negative workplace experiences in the past i think that should lead us to a place of kindness and um you really try to promote that in every aspect of our life but especially you know with our, our colleagues and our friends in the workplace yeah I had a conversation with some uh, someone a couple of weeks ago who said to me so what is a what's what's the quality that you think defines a leader and I mm. said I mean I just I said kindness mm. and the person looked at me and went really and I said yeah kindness yeah doesn't yeah. that take away from the effectiveness of a leader no <laughs> no no, I mean, kindness, you know, as we were, we were just talking about before, kindness, um, we we know that being kind um, impacts on so many different things, but kindness also uh, doesn't mean that you shouldn't set boundaries and, you know, shouldn't necessarily have rules or norms in the workplace or anything like that. Kindness is, I think, all about, especially in the workplace, is it all very about com clear communication, setting expectations, mm. um, being compassionate towards others. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're not a strong leader at all. In fact, quite the opposite. I think the strongest leaders um, have a great level of compassion for people, but they're also wonderful communicators and um, are very clear with the people who work with them uh, about what those what their expectations are and how things you know need to operate as well i think for me kindness with leaders often expresses itself as courtesy and respect because mm. i have worked with a lot of leaders who think that it's perfectly okay to yell scream and shout at somebody mm. and because that's just when people are stressed out that's what they do no they don't you can get upset with somebody. You can get angry by not yelling, screaming, shouting, and then being really clear with and and expressing that in such a way that it doesn't harm the relationship. But it's about the little things, you know, the mm. thanking somebody for doing a job, even if the, it's the job they expected to do. Right? Yes, exactly. It's, it's about, about being genuine. Yeah. Isn't it that gen genuine? I think genuine thanks and genuine appreciation goes a long way in the workforce, and it's completely underrated. I think that those little actions, um, you know, just calling people out of their staff morning tea for doing a great job at something. Yes, it might be their job, but they might be excelling at it, or you know, they might have really struggled with something and have persevered and 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 prospered at the end. And so, you know, those little actions make a huge difference certainly I know when I'm being managed and and um and working with other people having people acknowledge when I've really struggled to do something and um, persevered is very important to me um and you can see the look on other people's faces when it happens too you know you can see see it when it happens to them and you can see how people are genuinely pleased that they live in a, a well they work in a, a a workplace culture where people are just so um, willing to acknowledge others mm, yeah as you said it's the culture that's created when there's kindness and when people can trust that their mistakes are not being punished mm. or when they are encouraged to take risks not not mm. stupid risks but calculated risks yeah and it's okay to not get the perfect results it when they get recognized for things that they do when they get thanked and praised it it really increases that sense of self-worth on one hand and mm -hmm. and also that sense of belonging that sense of community and 
I know that studies Gallup does all these uh, does all of these you know like kind and kindness in, in organizations every year I think is the one thing that really hits it every time and what they found is that it actually impacts on on sickness on sick leave and on absenteeism mm. massively mm. Absolutely, it does. And I mean, people are mentally healthier when they're being treated with kindness and respect. And I think, um, you know, I, I, I think that bosses who are kind to their workers and display kindness towards themselves, um, you know, especially by doing like micromanagement to me is one of these things that is a hallmark of being unkind. It, the bosses are being unkind to themselves because they're creating themselves extra work, but they're being unkind, unkind and disrespectful to their workers as well, because they have hired them to do a particular job. Um, and they uh, should respect their abilities to do that job unless there's a problem of course and then they have to set those clear expectations and that's also a kind way of going about it but I, I really think that you know micromanagement is a hallmark of, of being unkind at work at all levels mm. um, and you know when people are trusted to do their jobs you can really find out how high they can fly and I think also that um, if, if people are doing well and being acknowledged for doing well that does that never takes away from a manager. Um, that always makes a manager look good to be acknowledging the team and to see how well we're fostering their team and to show that their team is doing well just lifts them as a manager. It certainly doesn't take away any of their own achievements. No, I, I mean, I, my, my, my thing that I tell my clients is always: your job as a leader is to create new leaders. Your job mm -hmm. is to encourage autonomy and competence, which are two of the core needs that people have. And if you're doing anything less than that, that's not being kind. So it's the same mm -hmm. thing. We're speaking the same language. The yes. question I've got for you is, have you found that kindness is de dealt with differently when people work remotely? Um, I Look, I think, I think there are different hallmarks of kindness when people work remotely. Um, I think, you know, being on time for meetings is always respectful. Um, and I think that, you know, in the virtual space, that's always respectful. Um, and it's a diff different in the, the literal workspace um, where, you know, you're physically showing up to meetings, but it's important because you don't see people around the office. You don't see them saying, sorry, I, I need to run to the bathroom or make a coffee before this meeting or whatever. You've actually got to, to be properly on time to make sure that people know that their time is respected as well. Um, I think as well, you know, it's harder to look people in the eye when you're meeting virtually. And I think it's always very kind to make sure that you're trying to look at people in the eye and to, to really, um, <laughs> yeah, to, yeah, exactly. Not to sort of be on the phone yeah. or, or, or whatever or, um, and to or, show or that. Don't do this. <laughs> yeah, that's Turn the right. video off. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're in a meeting where people are trying to get interaction from you um, and, and you're if you're not leading the meeting, you do need to be present in the meeting. Um, and there are times where you need to turn off your camera and things like that, but always, you know, make it a reason or make it, you know, for make it known as to, to why you're doing that. Um, and don't ignore the process. Don't just see it as a, you know, a meeting you can slack out of because you're not there in person um, because the meeting leaders are trying to get something from you and you'll know when you're leading a meeting that you need that interaction from other people too. So yeah, it is a bit different in the, the online space, but um, I think that the same principles apply, the same principles of respect and, um, you know, listening and making eye contact and making people know that you value their opinions and their input. Um, that's all remains essential. Yeah. I find that shout outs really make a difference because again, they, we've got the introverts and the extroverts. We've got the quiet ones that, you know, like to stay in the background and then the people who speak a lot and, and on, and, and when you're on zoom or any kind of um, meeting platform, the people who speak a lot can really push into the foreground, but then acknowledging the people who don't really makes a difference and encouraging them to speak as well. And then saying, because you can see people much more clearly than when you look around, room you have to turn your head and check mm -hmm. out but you've got everybody on a flat surface you can see who doesn't hasn't spoken for a while so it's mm -hmm. kindness to actually involve people and invite them to actually to, to say something and participate mm -hmm. in the conversation or you know at, at least have a conversation with them about later why they don't participate to find mm -hmm. out what you can do to support them 
Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's, that is really key. What you just said then is finding out how to support other people in the space, because this isn't something, I think it's becoming more natural to us doing all of these online conversations, but at the, certainly at the start of the pandemic, it was far less natural um, to have conversations like this and we were far less comfortable as well so um, making sure that you're supporting other people I also really like the um, indigenous um, concept of the yarning circle as well um, where everyone gets a turn to speak and everyone that person is speaking uh, they are being listened to and actively listened to um, and people do not interrupt so they get a certain amount of time time to do that um, and encouraging that sort of culture of everybody sharing is I think a great way of thinking about online meetings too it's so adaptable in the online space um, and it really does uh, help to bring people out of their shells if they know that they're definitely going to get a turn and that their ideas are going to be respected and people are going to listen to them silently. A good way of engaging in that or encouraging people to participate is is I and and my and what I found is is giving people the opportunity to lead the meeting. So it's not always the same person, the official leader who runs the meetings, but it gets handed around. Everybody gets a chance to run a meeting and have some unexpected elements in there, you know, like go around and say, so everybody shares, if you could be um a superhero, who would you be? Or mm -hmm. What's your favorite ice cream flavor or, you know, like really random things that we would share if we were in an office together that allows yeah, us yeah. to that allows us to get to know someone but that we don't do when we're on Zoom because it's so focused on task efficiency and getting things done and we go from meeting to meeting to meeting. I mean, I sometimes have clients and they go, I've got to go. I've got the next meeting already and I'm two minutes late. And I'm like, God, can you make, make put 10, 10 minutes in between? Be kind to yourself go have a glass of water, go to the bathroom instead of sitting there and going, oh, I'm hyperventilating because I can't get things done. Mm, absolutely. And I think there's, um, you know, there's a lot of pressure to be available as well now that all this technology is available and it's not being kind in the workplace and it's not being kind to yourself if you are making yourself available all the time just because the technology is there as well I mean people need breaks I often when I'm working with PhD candidates and, and um, people like that I'll say you know writing a thesis or writing a book or something like that is um, like running a marathon you're not getting better at it really while you're practicing at it you're getting better while you're resting your brain is passively going through the process and going through the ideas that you've got and things like that and that's when you come up with your good ideas that you can write mm. down but it's similar to that you know in in the workplace um you you actually have to actively take breaks um mm. to make sure that you're refreshed and that you're giving your best and that you have time to process the ideas and and things mm. that have happened in those meetings too it's not fair to you it's not fair to the people in the meetings that you've just been in or in the meetings that you're you're going to either um so yeah i think that's really important that mm. that you said you know take a break the thing is people judge The, the breaks differently when they're in an office and when they're at home. It's not okay mm. to put on a load of washing or clean up, clear, clear the dishwasher, but it's okay to stop at a colleague's desk and have a chat for 10 minutes mm. about, you know, the football game or, you know, the, whatever it might be. I mean, they've done enough studies to know that the, the average person in a, who works in an office spends only about three and a half to four hours every day actually working on the job they're hired for. Mm. The rest of the time they're doing other things. I'm not saying that that involves just chatting and so social media and all of that, but it's definitely not the seven and a half, eight hours that the job is there, you know, they get paid for. It's We need to have these breaks. We need to defrag every now and then because otherwise... Mm. And this is why I think burnout is going to be becoming a really big problem these days. Mm, I agree. I like that we need to defrag every so often. That's a great way of putting it. <laughs> I've just got the old defrag, you know, computer um, screen in my brain right now, you know, putting all of the pieces back yeah. together. I think that's really wonderful. Um, but I, I completely agree with you and it's very similar at home. And I think one of the wonderful things about working from home is that, you know, now my husband has been working from home for a couple of years where he used to go to an office every day and it has made our lives much easier. And um, we're able to put on loads of washing, able to empty the dishwasher, able to take turns of taking the children to school and, and 
able to even exercise. It's really important to to schedule that in your day too, um, because even though that will take out an hour of your day, you're going to be so much more efficient um, when mm. you do that, and you've got those endorphins flowing, and that you're physically healthy as well. It, it helps you both mentally and physically, and and having that flexibility, I think we should really make the most of it um, when we are working in this this online space. Mm. My sense is that especially startups, so companies that are breaking the rules in the first place often, mm. they 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 deal with people in a much kinder way than the big corporates often do who, you know, I have had friends who were totally burnt out. I mean, I had one friend who was on flights all the time and then, you know, like mm. we can't afford, you know, 10, 8, 10 hour flights, 12 hour flights. We're not mm. doing business class anymore. We're just going, you know, you're going to be economy and doesn't matter mm. if you come home at 11 o'clock at night or at six o'clock in the morning, we still expect you to do five hours uh, of five hour weeks. And these mm. days, that's not, the, especially since the pandemic, that's not the case. I have mm. clients now who, where they, they, their staff have, are allowed to have as much leave as they want. It's unlimited mm. leave. Mm. Wow. Yeah. And it's the, tr the trust that they, yeah. you know, they trust their employees. And as we said before, trust is so important. I, I remember even as a, you know, when I was consulting with a particular um, company and they had to fly me, um, they had to fly me down to Tasmania for, to run a particular workshop, which was being held at sort of five o'clock in the evening. But I flew down on a really early flight, you know, probably a six 6 a.m. flight, maybe 5.30 a.m. flight. Um, and I got down there and the first thing I did was check into the hotel that um, I was checking the hotel I was staying in, um, you know, put my bags down and go out for a walk. And then I mentioned to them, oh, you know, I got here and I went for a walk and, you know, before I started work and they're like, well, what are we paying you for? We're paying you for a whole day, you know, to work. And I'm like, you're paying me to perform, to perform after being on a flight for however long it is from Brisbane to, to Hobart. I needed to get out and walk. So I am going to do that, you know. So that those small kind of even microaggressions are um, really unhelpful and very unkind. And it's certainly important. And I think I did the kindest thing to them and the kindest thing to me by making sure that my brain and my body were physically healthy enough to run a fabulous workshop and we had a fantastic workshop we did a great you know had a great event that night and um but I do put that down to the fact that I was able to go out and defrag um after my flight yeah and that I think is so important it's be it's treating people like adults like you know again also children trust them I mean that's a different mm. story but trust that people do what they what they set out to do and that's that's kindness as well because it is again about the competence and the autonomy and all of that mm -hmm. so yeah it's it's about it's about recognizing that people do their best and that we don't need to control them no no and Which i saw yeah, I, absolutely i saw something really interesting recently which so was talking about um how Back in the olden days, um, the olden days, I sound like one of my children at the moment, but back, you know, a century ago, it was actually the um, the epitome of, uh, I suppose, hard work to show that you didn't actually need to work hard anymore. You'd worked really, really hard and you could take a break. And that was that was a status symbol, whereas now a status symbol is being busy and not taking breaks and like, oh, well, you know, I don't take holidays and I'm really focused on my job and everything like that. So, you know, where, where have we gone? We've gone from um, showing that we have done well enough to take a break and that was a status symbol mm -hmm. to um, we're doing well enough to not take breaks and now that's a status symbol. And it, I think it is so, so unhealthy um, to, to be like that. Um, we have to, we have to set a culture where, you know, productivity is really, really important. Um, but to get productivity and to, to be as, you know, productive as possible, that involves being really healthy in your mind and healthy in your body and, um, making sure that there is a culture that is built that really fosters that. Absolutely. So I think some of the kindest things we can actually do for for somebody who is so used to, to being on all the time is when they are, you know, not contacting them after a certain time, leaving the weekends free, when they're on holidays and when they contact us, saying to them, you're on holidays, we'll talk about it when you get back. And really encouraging people to take that time off. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people, we are just so running on adrenaline 
mm-hmm. and this being on 24 seven, that it's, it's really hard to get off. It's, it becomes addictive. So yes. kindness can be telling somebody not to do something. Yes. Absolutely. And setting boundaries again Mm. is really, really important. Um, And also thinking, do I, should I be sending an email at nine o'clock at night? A, for the person who I'm sending it to, but B, for me, why am I sending an email at nine o'clock at night? Yeah. Just having those, those, that sort of front of mind. Which is where we are now at um, kindness to self and kindness to others. So it means the same in life as it means at work. It's about receiving and giving and having the gratitude on the inside when we make that happen. So thank you so much, Eliza. This has been a very fruitful conversation and I hope that it's given everybody lots of food for thought. Certainly has given me lots of food for thought. And um, thank you everybody for watching and listening and we'll see you next time. 